Welcome to the Make Ready with the Experts podcast. I'm your host, Fernando Coelho. We're here at Pantio Studios bringing you the very best from in and around the firearms industry, covering topics like guns, gear, firearms training, self-defense, and so much more. Everything from industry insights about the latest gear and training techniques, to hunting, survival, and empty hands. But this isn't just about the guns, folks. This is about the stories. The military, law enforcement, and civilian stories of heroics protecting our country, fellow citizens, friends, and neighbors. MakeReady.tv is the official website of Pantio Productions and features over 5,000 segments from world-famous instructors. With new video titles added each month, MakeReady.tv is widely known as the Netflix of firearms training. However, we really do go beyond that. We have survival series. We have empty hands. We have edged weapons. We cover armorer skills. We've done documentaries, even medical and hunting. With your subscription, you will have access to an extensive library of videos. To be quite honest, we got a lot. Be sure to visit MakeReady.tv and subscribe today to stream our exclusive content to any device, anywhere, anytime. This is content that just may save your life or the life of someone you love. This is Fernando with Pantio Productions and we are here for another podcast on the range on a day that's about to turn to shit with serious rain. And we still have another, I don't know, six, five, I don't know, I lost track, days of filming to do. But miraculously, although I, I shouldn't say miraculously, I, I kind of expected as much. We're here with Jamie Caldwell from One Minute Out. And Jamie, we had two days of filming to do with Jamie, and he was able to knock out pretty much all of it in one day. I mean, wow. we just found extra stuff for him to do on the second day. I mean. We had him playing chess. Uh, he, we showed we showed him how to play checkers. I mean, I yeah, never played that one before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we had a good time. We had an opportunity to film some content that we really can't talk about right now, but is going to be coming out soon with some manufacturers we work with. But more importantly, thanks for being out here, Jamie. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's always a great time to come out here and do some shooting, do some filming. Uh, I mean, it's. Uh, state-of-the-art film this is the you know this is the this is the creme de la creme if you would of all the filming i've done and you know whatever a little bit i've done but you know i get different opportunities so it's always great to come out here hang out with you hang out with the crew and and see how it's supposed to be well i appreciate that oh, I mean, thank you I, although i do really think i mean what do you think man why don't we just switch all just get gopros yeah you know it works phones. for some guys <laughs> it does it really does i really think we should I yeah mean, just get mounts for your iphone that's it that's exactly, all you need is exactly cheap, you don't need this ten thousand dollar tripod no just, no know, i mean little, I, little uh, best buy one in your in your iphone you're good to go. i think we're good i mean yeah, if it we'll works. be right on track with everybody else and, you know i think we're <laughs> but that's not your style no, not at all. no, 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 no. Full I, production and uh, yeah, it's it, the end product is always impressive. I appreciate that. It's you know what I've always envisioned it as when you have top tier instructors and they're training and they're teaching, you have to present them in the best possible light. And when you take a great instructor and you have poor filming, poor quality, poor lighting, poor whatever, poor sound. Mm -hmm. It just makes the instructor come off bad, and then the viewer at home doesn't understand that it's not the instructor, it's a production company behind the curtain that kind of boned it, you know? Right. So I've seen videos before I started at Pantier Productions where noted instructors <laughs> video, and I'd watch the video and go, damn, I know this dude, he's not like that in person, you know? I mean, he, he doesn't talk like that, and it was just... Or production, and I thought, you know, no, we we got to do it right. We got to make the instructor look well, uh, to the point where, when a when a student takes a class from the instructor, it's the same experience. Maybe a little neutered because of things things being said on camera. We kind of we don't bleep stuff out, but we always ask the instructors to tone it down a little bit. Some instructors don't listen, then we don't care. But uh, but it's still fun. It's still fun. So basically, what you're saying then is, you can then take a. a 
a half-hearted instructor like myself and make me look good then with your production. <laughs> well, I think... <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. I mean, <laughs> we did pretty good on the last two. I mean, yeah, not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> you make me look good. I, I appreciate mean, that. Especially when you're like, hey, we need to shoot this at night. I'm like, my cameras don't like night. You know? Ah, oh, shit. Night vision. Got to get a night vision, too. This is yeah. going to be a pain in the ass. But... It actually worked out. It's actually some badass footage. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, and I, and I know production-wise, I mean, we film a lot of stuff during the day, and then it's, you got to we break for dinner, and you're done for the day, but it's like, nope, we're going to break for dinner, and then we got to go back to the range and shoot again at night, yeah. and everybody's like, oh, all right. They hate seeing me come. I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're great. We're going to be up till midnight tonight, and then back on the range at 8 o'clock in the morning. If yeah. I remember correctly, that day we went back out at night, it was pouring rain. Oh yeah, we were under a carport. Yeah. It was. It was like we were needed to build an ark. Yeah, it, it was. It was bad. It, it was, was bad. You dropped. Wasn't the PVS fourteen? Something took a mud bath. Yep. Yeah, it was a set of. Uh, I think it was thirty ones. Yeah, because I had <laughs> it. I had this like camera rig on it. It wasn't sitting right in my mount. And it was like, okay, let's we can get the footage we need. Let's just balance this thing. And yep, yep. yeah, I think I took a step somewhere, and all of a sudden it went. Poom. I'm like, ah, oh, I need a minute. You wipe all this off, and all right, we're good to go. Let's do it again. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. That's the behind the scenes stuff. That yeah, people no one don't knows. get to see. No, yeah. no one yeah, it's, it's not all as smooth as what ends up, you know, being put on the DVD. But yeah, yeah we make it happen. No, it, it is cool. It, it is fun. One, it's great being able to work with the instructors. It's great to be able to work with you. Uh, it, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to get this content out there for people to see. But then, you know, the behind-the-scenes stuff that you remember, it's, it's just, it's cool, you know? Uh, that, that's the sad part. Most people don't get to see what it's like behind the scenes. And, um, hell, I think we should start coming out with behind-the-scenes videos for every video title. I think those will probably sell better than oh, the actual I know. title. Yeah. You need to add some bloopers in there for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, at exactly. the end. Yeah. Yeah. People will watch it. One and a half hour instructional video, two hours of bloopers. I yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it probably will. Yeah. Now, for those uninitiated, for those that may not know, mm -hmm. right, we have a lot of folks out there that uh, they come to our website to see one instructor or they're coming to see one uh, style of whatever. And then they'll, they'll come across you and go, oh, who's this dude? Mm -hmm. So um, tell me, uh, let's start with a little bit about your background. What okay. did you do? So uh, I came, I was in the Army, Special Operations, uh, came in in 93 with a ranger contract i knew that that's what i wanted to do is i wanted to go into special operations i didn't want to be some regular army guy i mean i wanted to do something high speed so i ensured i had that ranger contract coming in uh, made it through those all the phases there got to first ranger battalion and spent seven years in first ranger battalion enjoyed it loved it still love to go back to savannah and visit it's just a great area uh, but i knew that there was more out there you know we got to work with you know other guys SF units and the unit uh, and, I, and I saw that as hey uh, I want to do that so uh, went to selection made it uh, became an operator at the unit and that was my home uh, I felt like that's where I that's where I was meant to be so I spent uh, 14 years there so total career I mean I retired out of there but 21 years and some change uh, from Ranger Battalion then to the unit, and I kind of hit it in that heyday. You know, I got there just before 9-11, so finished up, you know, my initial training OTC and everything and got to my team, and shortly after 9-11 happened, and then it was deployment after deployment after deployment after deployment after deployment, you know, 14, 14 deployments later um, is when I, when I wrapped up. But I, you know, I, I spent a majority of my time there on a team. And then after I finish my team leader time, you know, we have normal progression of different routes in the building to stay and groom you and, you know, become other things. And the route I took was to go to our research and development section. So that's kind of how this whole NVG and the night vision stuff and us meeting came about is I spent uh, over three years in our research and development 
doing NVG stuff. So night vision, lasers, weapon sights and scopes, that was kind of my specialty. So I got to know a lot of the manufacturers, helped develop some of the gear that's currently out there, guys are running, uh, gear that I run, I'm still tied in with the manufacturers and help with some product development and testing. So it's, it, it's a unique opportunity that I have. I mean, obviously from the background and the relationships I have is what's offered me this, but you know, now after I retired, I. I've got One Minute Out is my company that I started and, and, and I'm out there doing training. The majority of it is night vision training. So doing NVG classes, a lot of it for law enforcement and government agencies. You know, we kind of took for granted, I did at least, how much time I've spent under nods and, and you know, how much I knew about it. Everything from the history of them to how light works and frequency <laughs> works and light vision tube works and then all the latest and greatest gear. So the more the more guys I ran into that were looking for training is is kind of how I'm like I just can't let all this information knowledge and you know everything I've learned just go to waste. I, you know I need to share it. So that's when I started teaching and started my company and it's been going great. I teach when I want to teach. You know I mean I'm 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 you know we just had this conversation. I, I'm I'm not one of those instructors. There's nothing wrong with them. You know it's just it's not my primary gig. Mm -hmm. So I don't. Like, all right, here's my schedule for the whole year. Come sign up for class here, 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 here. You know, if guys are interested in a class, then reach out to me. Um, you know, uh, you can reach me on email or you can best on social media. You know, one minute out is the number one, one minute out uh, dot com or just one minute out on Instagram. Just message me. Let me know you're interested in the class and we can get something. Um, yeah, so I'm doing that now and... I guess my uh, my true passion is fishing. I uh, I've fished my whole life. I kind of saw that I could do it uh, in retirement and set myself up for that as I was getting close to retirement with sponsors and the whole nine yards. It's uh, that was kind of I exited out of the military and sort of wanted to not do anything with it. I mean I was burnt out. You know, 14 deployments and all the training, everything that I did, I just if I didn't see another. <laughs> I'm like, that's fine by me. You know, I was like, I need to do something else and get my mind off of it. So I'm still fishing professionally, traveling around the country and, you know, bass fishing, got full sponsors and boat wrap. And I mean, I love that. that that's, I just, it's kind of my therapy too. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? Yeah. Everybody needs it, especially after all that time and all those deployments and, you know, everything I've been through and, and you know, a lot of the guys, it's cool to see all the hobbies that everybody has. Sure. I mean, we've got guys that race motorcycles, you know, guys that are, you know, making knives and woodworking and, you know, start up all these other businesses. And sometimes you, you know, have no idea what they did. Right. You know, you're like, oh, this guy's just, you know, this is woodworking company or something. Like, hey, you know who that dude is? <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, I'm just out there fishing, a normal fisherman. And, you know, a few people know what I did. But for the most part, I, I don't say anything. It's I'm just another professional bass angler just out there trying to catch fish and have fun first time i heard about that it's like so what does jamie do now he, he, he's like no he fishes so i'm picturing you on the side of a shore or at a lake right. you know, throwing in a line fishing having a beer i'm like okay but that's i mean he's retired he fishes right he's like, no no he professionally fishes oh shit okay that's a badass whole another aspect you know? to it oh yeah people don't even understand that you know the prep that goes in i mean it's just like you know, I mean, we prep all the research that we do, you know, the intel that we get to who are we going after, you know, and then you get out there and you got to execute on target. I mean, same thing. And that's probably why I love it so much. The right. tournament aspect is, you know, I'm doing all my intel gathering beforehand. What lake am I going to? What's the seasonal pattern? Where should these fish be? Looking at my maps, you know, like my satellite imagery and finding out, okay, these are the places I want to go and check and run and, you know, all my tackles prepped and then I get out there and it's, it's fast paced. Right. I mean, it's not like... I don't sit on my boat and drink a beer and just throw a line in. I mean, I am targeting specific areas and looking at things, and then I'm off to the next area and the next area, and just, you know, I, that's what I love about it. Is right. it? It's still, I mean, you've got to be sharp. You've got to be thinking ahead of the fish and the environmental conditions to see, you know, things change throughout the day. It's the same thing on target. You know, the enemy changes. We have all the intel we want. We can watch ISR. We see where the enemy's at currently. But as soon as we come in there and land, they're scattering, they're moving, they're doing whatever, and we have to react to what they're doing to stay ahead of them. It's a chess game. Right. And uh, it's, you know, that's why I love it so much. It, it's, it's almost like I'm, you know, I'm back out there. I'm just going after a different target right now. So tell yeah. me, has there ever been a time it's 3 in the morning and you're out there fishing with knots? 
<laughs> I can just see I, that. I mean, I mean, you know, <laughs> I do own quite a bit of night vision, and maybe there's been a time or two where I mean, I'm like, hey, let's throw these in. The <laughs> yeah. I mean, pitch dark night, it's a lot easier to see where you're going because we don't have headlights on a boat or anything. I got a, you know? I, I got an idea for a whole new instructional video. Night fishing. Uh, n yeah, night fishing. Well, that's it. Night fishing. Night fishing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We can do that under nods. Yeah. The whole night. The yeah. crew is going to hate my ass. Oh, yeah, they will. We're going to be on another boat following you. Uh, we're going to be rocking back and forth. I already know some guys are going to be seasick. I oh, mean, you, you can put them in a, in, in a, in a tub. They're going to be seasick. So yep. uh, I, I can see this happening. But yep. I think this is badass. It'd be fun. Yeah. It'd definitely be fun. I like that. So, all right. You fish. All right. What's the worst experience you've had fishing? Uh, I still have them, man. There's days I get out there and I don't catch them. Well, that's I mean, oh yeah, you, you figure go out there all day and you don't get a fish, not a single oh, yeah. fish. Yeah, I just had a tournament. Uh, I just had a tournament on, and day one of practice, I think I caught a catfish, a striper, and I think some other species. I didn't catch a bass. Which it's, I mean, this time of year, the Potomac, everything's going, you know, we had a full moon, just come off a full moon, and a lot of different conditions set up where everybody I talk to is like, man, I can't believe you guys are coming right now. And that, you know, it's always the story. Right. We're either there two weeks after, oh, it was awesome, everybody was catching everything, or it's like, you guys are here now, oh, it's horrible, and nobody's catching anything, you know? Yeah. I mean, the fish go through phases. They get in a funk, there's different conditions that change, and, you know, we just hit it at, at a tough time. But, you know, I, I like those tournaments. You know, I, I, it's always fun to go out there and catch them. Everybody, when they go fishing, whether it's just recreational, you're just sitting on the bank, or, you know, you're out there competing, everybody, you, you love to just catch them. That, that's why you're out there. But I, I do love, you know, we call it a grind. I love it when it's a grind. When you have to go out there, not everybody's catching them. Because that is what separates, you know, the guys that can figure them out right. and get on them to the guys that are just there and hoping, you know, luck. And there's definitely luck in fishing. I don't sure. care what anybody says. You know, there's times you throw in there and you may catch a five pounder and somebody else may throw in there and catch a two pounder. You know, you, you can't really tell the quality you're going to catch <clears throat> in certain areas. It definitely varies. There's some, some factors in there. But, yeah, so this one was just a grind. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I ended up figuring some stuff out and kind of building on it. And, you know, what's fun is... Even day one, you know, I, I didn't have a stellar day on day one, but I caught him. I was kind of in, still in contention, and I figured some stuff out, you know, on day one. And, that, and that's always exciting for me is you get out there, you're competing, and then you, you're continuing to put that puzzle together, you know, and you just keep building off of that. You know, that's where you end up having a lot of success. So, nice. it's, yeah, it's the, even those days that are rough, I still, the very, you know, that end of the day, when I get off the water, I'm like, oh man, today sucked, but man, I want to get right back out there. I want to get back on them. I want to, you know, let's get after them again tomorrow and let's figure it out. I want to figure it out and catch them every time. So the rough days just drive me to do it. So it's therapeutic. Oh, it is. Definitely. I mean, I, it's, it, you know, everything I've been through, you know, 14 deployments and have, you know, lost guys you know right in front of me right next to me have plenty of guys you know throughout all of that um you got to get away you know everybody and i think that's you know that's why a lot of guys when you see them retire they pick up some hobby or they do stuff you need it you have to have you have to have an hour to just get off on your own and just you know whether it's be by yourself or just get out there from jump in the boat i get out there on the water and it's nothing but just me against the fish right. that's it and i'm i mean i love the outdoors i've always loved it since i was a kid so getting out there seeing bald eagles all the time and you know catching some fish just taking in rays you know, take a dip if i'm hot i mean it's just it's enjoyable you know and i mean i enjoy going to the range too sure that's sure. fun i have a you know i just built a really nice range on my property so there's times that i'm like oh I'm gonna go down to the range today and just go down there and go sling some lead and have some fun. But you, you know, I would say anybody getting out after you know all this period that we've been at war for so long, you know, don't bottle yourself up. Don't you know? Don't just get in that depression because it happens to a lot of guys when they get out. You know, find something, find a hobby. That's the best thing that you can do is find something you like to do, or maybe you know you have something that you don't even know you like to do yet. Just start researching different things. You know, I mean, I also recently got into like grilling you know i mean i've got a really nice grill at home i'm getting ready to get a new pellet you know pellet grill and start uh -oh. smoking and uh -oh. you know, it just interests me 
and it's something that obviously the family is going to go with me. You know, make, make a nice brisket and cook some good ribs. And, you know, I love steak. So I can't wait to smoke like a nice big ribeye. I mean, just. So that's, my next, that's my next little venture that I'm, I'm, gonna I'm do. digging this. So the next time you're here for a video shoot, you're cooking? Hey, we might be able to make that happen. That'd be badass. Yeah. I might need to come in a day early so we can start the oh, smoker. Oh, hell, yeah. And, yeah. hell yeah. Or maybe we just get you to buy a smoker, and then I'll come in, use your smoker, so right. I don't have to bring mine. All right. You tell me which smoker to get. All right. You get your ass out a day early, yep. and then that way, the next day, I'll warn the crew. It's like, look, Jamie cooked this, so <laughs> we got live guns here. Yeah. So we'll yeah. see how well the crew treats me. <laughs> <laughs> Badass. That is what we'll do now, in the next shoot. First, your homework is tell me which grill I need to get, which smoker I need to get. Done. I sure as hell don't know. Yep. Okay. I'm still learning. I haven't okay. picked mine out yet, so but I'll let you know which you one I You let me know get. which one I need to yeah. get. I'll get that. On the next shoot, you come a day early. We we will impress the crew. I like it. And if like we don't it. impress them, we'll have fun. <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. I think there'll be bourbon and cigars involved in this, too. So I think we'll... Definitely. You know what? Fuck the crew. We'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We're happy. Yeah. We're good. We got bourbon. Yeah, yeah exactly. we're good to go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah badass hey this is fernando at pantier productions and we have jamie here from one minute out and uh, we will see you on the range or we will see you fishing definitely appreciate it take care guys be sure to visit makeready.tv and subscribe today to stream our exclusive content to any device anywhere anytime Patio.